Let's talk about the current state of the WWE because it's still to this day. I mean, the other night Christian was on their big pop. Edge was on their big pop. That match with Randy Orton was was next level. I mean, great in-ring psychology. It was beautiful. It was like a trip back in time. Stone Cold. I didn't mean to interrupt you, but I, that's my thoughts exactly. I, I enjoyed that match so much that, uh, you know, I found myself, I watched it with no volume. I just watched the match and was mesmerized. But anyway, let's go ahead. No, well, you're you're 100 right. But then when Stone Cold's glass pop, it, it still gets a massive pop. Whenever the bells go off for you, the place goes crazy. Right now, there's not a lot of people. I mean, Charlotte Flair is probably the most over out of anybody. Roman was getting a little bit of a push. But what do you think about the state right now? Not a little bit of a push, but with the crowd. What do you think about the current state of the WWE? And do you think there comes a time where there's some younger guys who are like you know going crazy? and the fans really go over for them. Yeah, so there's such an influx right now of, of, of really basically new talent. And so they're, they're all new. So when we came up, like myself and Triple H and Shawn Michaels, we already had got established guys that were there to work against and, and guys that we were looking to push out. Not, not, not in a, I mean, just in a competitive manner. Yeah, yeah, a, yeah, yeah, yeah. Get yeah. them the hell out of here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's just like we were hungry and we were, everybody was, was grabbing for that brass ring. And we were, you know, we were competitive amongst ourselves, even though Stone Cold was at the top. Well, there was Rock right after him and Triple H and Sean and Kurt. I mean, everybody was reaching for the brass ring. Um, and, and it was a healthy, uh, it was a healthy competition. Um, you know, right now, I th I th there's an overall, I think, niceness, too niceness yeah. among the guys. You know, nobody really wants to, you know, nobody wants to be that guy. And um, I, I, I don't know. I, I hope so. It just it's so hard to figure out now how to connect uh, with our with our audiences, um, you know, I protected my character for so long and, and did all the things that I did because that's what I felt like I couldn't have that disconnect. When people saw me in public and when people saw me in TV, I wanted them to see the same thing. Yeah. In this day and age, you see people out trying to do something on TV and then, you know, and then they're on their phones and doing social media and they're something completely different. I agree. You know, so there's a big disconnect there and any mystique that you might have is lost. And then it's like, Oh, okay. Oh, he's acting. He's doing, he's doing this. Now I'm not saying the way I did things was, was right. It was right for me, Worked, but, but I, it worked for me and, and I lived it and I haven't, I have no regrets because here I am, you know, 30 years later and we're having this conversation. So I, I think, you know, I don't know if you can put the toothpaste back in the tube or not, but I think there needs to be a kind of a, a little bit of a, of a pullback and not so much exposure to the guys and let them try and figure out what it is they want to, what, what they want to present on TV and then kind of live it a little bit uh, just so that there's some authenticity to it. Yeah. How is everything? We give everything away now. Everything's given away. It's interesting, too, because you see somebody on social media, right? This was the big Lana Lashley Rusev angle that really, I don't know what the expectation was inside the company, but outside the company, everybody was like, well, we know Lana and Rusev are married. This is kind of a weird thing to happen because the behind the scenes now, you're learning a lot more about for whether it's social media and the human behind the character. It's a very interesting time to kind of balance that whole thing. It really is. And, and it, it's. I kind of look at it as it's, it's kind of a detriment, really. I really do. Uh, I mean, obviously, I understand, you know, everybody understands what sports entertainment is now. But you still, you know, magicians don't don't show their tricks. They don't show you how to do the tricks. If you do that, then it's, you know, it's OK. Well, now I understand how he does it. So it was, <laughs> it was interest. So, and that's kind of what we've done with our business to a degree. There is, there's no mystery, there's no mystique to it. And I, I think it's a, it's a detriment to, you know, obviously, you know, I, everything's progressing and evolving and, but uh, there, there, there is something to some, some old school stuff that's been lost that I think they need to get back to.
do you think there's going to be someone that comes up that obviously there's never going to be another Undertaker, but will somebody be able to come up and keep that mystique throughout their whole career as you have for so long? Like, is that possible nowadays? It's going to be really hard. Um, like I said, I didn't have to battle. Uh, I didn't have to battle social media for the first, you know, 10, 15 years, really. Uh, I didn't have to worry about cell phones and cameras as much as guys do. I mean, you can't do anything or can't be anywhere in this day and age without somebody taking a video, or taking a picture, uh, you know, posting it to whatever. So, I mean, it, it, it's going to take such a big effort by someone. I mean, hopefully someone is motivated enough to do it uh, or at least try to do it. Um but I, I just I just can't see it, it happening in this day and age. There's just there everybody's so overexposed. Look good, feel good, feel good, play good. Play good, pay good, pay good, live good, live good, die good.